everyone, Steve from Back Country Gallery here. This time around, I want to talk about how to get smooth, creamy, buttery backgrounds for your wildlife subjects. I get this question quite a bit, and there are six primary factors that can help you make your backgrounds look like what you see right here in this photo. Now, before we begin, I want to make a clarification. Many of the techniques in this video involve reducing depth of field since this has the side effect of making the backgrounds softer. However, just to be 100% clear, depth of field actually refers to the zone of acceptable sharpness in an image, not the quality or amount of background blur. Still, there's a definite correlation between the two since the shallower the depth of field gets, the less detail we see in the background. So with that footnote out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Number one, fast glass. Okay, don't stop the video. I know this is an expensive option, but it's only the first of six. The others mostly don't depend on having a huge checking count, I promise. Still, the truth is that fast glass shot wide open can help you get those smooth, creamy backgrounds. In fact, half the reason I put up with the weight and the expense of the big guns is because of that super thin depth of field and the corresponding soft backgrounds that come along with it. It just makes it easier to isolate the subject and it works especially well when used in tandem with the other tips in this video. Of course, if you don't have fast glass, it's not hopeless by any means. The fast optics simply make it a little easier. Still, regardless of the lens, the advice is the same. Your best bet is to open that aperture as wide as it can go and try to implement one or more of the tips that follow to help you dial in those buttery smooth backgrounds. Number two, subject, background, and photographer distances. Next, we have to consider the distance from the subject to the background and the photographer to the subject. Let's start with the subject to background distance. The closer the subject is to the background, the harder it is to completely blur that background out. In fact, there's nothing more discouraging than finding like a cool subject sitting inches from a busy, distracting background. There's just no way to blur the background away in that scenario, even with fast glass. For this image, I'm too far away and the subject is too close to the background and you know what, the whole thing just looks too busy. On the other hand, when the subject is farther away from the background, our chances for a smooth, creamy background start to look a whole lot better. The other half of this equation is how close you are to the subject. The closer you can get, the smoother that background is going to be. The farther you are from the subject, on the other hand, the tougher it is to get that same look. In fact, getting close to my subject is the number one way I get those smooth, creamy backgrounds, regardless of the lens. So ideally, you want to be close to your subject, but at the same time, you want the subject as far away from the background as possible. The real trick here is how you apply this in the field. When approaching an animal, watch the background and try to maneuver so the farthest area of the background, you know, that still looks good, is behind the subject during your approach. From there, the closer you can get to your subject, obviously without putting yourself in danger or disrupting the behavior of the animal, the more that background detail will drop into a nice soft blur for you. In fact, this is my approach for all of my wildlife shots. I'm always looking at the background as much as the subject, even regardless of whether or not I'm trying to blur that background completely out or not. Okay, so I was putting this video together and thought of a side note pertaining to subject distance. When it comes to soft backgrounds, the size of the subject itself is also a consideration. For smaller subjects, you can often get close enough to smooth out distracting backgrounds. However, for larger subjects, like say maybe elk, deer, bear, that sort of thing, you'll often discover that if you want a smooth, creamy background, you won't be able to include the entire animal since you have to be back farther than you would with a smaller subject. In short, the distances just won't work out most of the time. So the alternative though is to go for like three quarter shots or head shots like you'll see throughout this video for larger animals. Number three, focal length. Next we have focal length. In short, the longer the lens, the more blur you'll get behind the subject at any given distance and f-stop. This means if you have a 600 millimeter focal length and are happy with the shot, don't continue to approach the subject and use less focal length. Stick to the distance for 600 millimeter. Also, make sure you're using the proper focal length at the time you're shooting. I often see people forget to zoom in the heat of the moment and they end up using a focal length that's way too short and that results in busier backgrounds. 
Number four, get low. Another trick is to shoot from a lower perspective. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but when you get low, it has the effect of compressing and piling up the foreground and background, making the image appear to have much shallower depth of field and far more background blur than you might expect for a given focal length and f-stop. In fact, this prairie dog was taken with a 500 PF, which is a 5.6 lens, but it looks like it was shot at a much wider f-stop thanks to the low perspective and the way the background sort of piles up behind him. For more benefits of getting low, see my blog post. I'll put a link in the description area on YouTube and under this video at my site if you want to check out that post. Number five, shoot full frame. Okay, this is another potentially expensive option, but it works well even better than fast glass in many cases. Full frame cameras allow you to get closer to your subject than crop cameras do with the same lens. For instance, my D500 with a 600 millimeter lens attached has the same field of view as a 900 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. At first this sounds like a benefit, but when it comes to cranking out buttery backgrounds, it's really not. The reason it's an issue is that even though the lens gives me a 900 millimeter field of view on a D500, it's still a 600 millimeter lens regardless of what size sensor is in the camera it's attached to. This means it carries the depth of field characteristics of a 600 millimeter lens with it. This narrower field of view on the D500 means I have to be one and a half times farther back with a 600 millimeter lens on a D500 than I would with a 600 millimeter lens on something full frame like a D850. Of course, the farther back you are from the subject with a given lens, the greater the depth of field and the less background blur. In this case, I'd have one and a half times more detail in the background. Keeping the distance down by like zooming to 400 won't help either since the shorter focal length will give you deeper depth of field from the same distance. So either way, it means less subject isolation and less chance of a smooth, creamy background. However, by shooting full frame, I can get physically closer with the same focal length or use a longer focal length, and that in turn drops my depth of field, and of course that in turn gives me those nice smooth backgrounds that come along for the ride. In fact, half the reason I shoot full frame is for the subject isolation opportunity it affords. All that said, it's also not mandatory either. This photo of a meadowlark was taken with a D7500, and honestly, that's about as clean a background as you can get. By leveraging some of the other tips in this video, I was easily able to create a buttery smooth background, even with a crop camera. So don't feel like you have to like run out and buy a full frame camera tomorrow. Number six, don't crop. I know, what the heck does cropping have to do with getting creamy backgrounds, right? Honestly, a lot. In fact, this is probably one of the biggest issues I encounter when people tell me they can't seem to get those smooth, soft backgrounds. The thing is, it's not so much about the cropping as it is the fact that if you need to crop, you are probably too far away to begin with. And as you know, the farther back you are, the more depth of field and the more background detail you see as a consequence. So ideally, try to fill the frame so you need minimal to no cropping at home. It's one of the best paths to a buttery background. So that's the gist of it. However, please keep in mind that you seldom need every tip mentioned in this video if you want one of those smooth, buttery backgrounds. Often a combination of like maybe two or three tips are enough and sometimes only one tip is needed to get the job done. Also, I don't recommend whipping these tools out for every shot. The truth is, most of the time, I don't want a background smoothed out to the consistency of a silk pie. I like having a variety of styles and shots in my portfolio. I only recommend trying to annihilate backgrounds like this if you're in a situation where the background detail just really isn't adding anything to the image, or worse, maybe it's a distraction in the image. So if you enjoyed this video though, you'll absolutely love my eBooks and video workshops. My books and video series are jam packed with tons of tips, tricks, and techniques just like this that are guaranteed to make you a better photographer. Everything from autofocus techniques to exposure to wildlife photography to Lightroom tutorials, all of that's covered. Oh, and by the way, if you're a Nikon mirrorless shooter, make sure you check out my new autofocus book just for the Nikon Z series. Also, don't forget to check out my site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss a video, article, workshop opportunity, or even a product launch. Finally, I'd love it if you'd go down and hit that little like button right there, and then after that, hit that subscribe button, and you know what, hit that bell and get notified so you know when I release a new video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.